Hello, Chester T families. I'm Meg Killingsworth, your Family Engagement Coordinator, and I want to share some Title I information with you. This is called our annual meeting, and we are having virtual meetings where folks can join and tune in and hear the slideshow and ask questions on September 30th and October 1st at various times. But we also understand that lots of folks are busy working and with other obligations and might not be able to attend the times that we've set up. So this is a great way to be in the know of how Title I benefits your child at Chestity. So first off, what is a Title I school? Title I is a federally funded program under the Every Student Succeeds Act. A Title I school is a school that receives this additional federal funding, and it was created to support schools with a high number or percentage of students from low-income families. So Chester T qualified for Title I, Title I assistance because we have a large percentage of students who qualify for free and reduced lunch. We get extra funding from the federal government, and we use that funding um, to purchase a variety of teaching methods and materials that help us to reinforce curriculum concepts and to help provide support so that every student can meet our state standards. We want to provide that extra support through extra teachers, um, extra resources, and we're going to talk in this slideshow about how that money is spent and what we purchase with that extra federal funding. So Title I funding is provided to schools based on the number of students who qualify for the free or reduced price lunch program. So when families are in need of assistance, they help our school by completing those forms because we get extra funding based on students who qualify. One of the biggest misconceptions though, is that only students who qualify for free and reduced lunch can get extra support and services, and that is not true. Any student who is most at risk can qualify for extra help whether they get free or reduced lunch or not. The free and reduced lunch only helps to determine how much money we receive from our federal government. There are several ways that our school spends our Title I money that we receive. First, we provide extra support staff. These teachers teach additional segments of reading and or math instruction. We also provide extra support staff to serve as an instructional coach or lead teacher. That person supports our teachers. We have support materials in reading or math that we purchase. We use funds for after school learning or tutoring programs. We can use the funds to transport students home from after school programs and during summer school if we're able to have those. And this funding helps promote our family engagement through uh, my job and also through programs like APTT. The Title I funding for family engagement allows for an active family engagement program at Chester T. It funds the salary for your family engagement coordinator. We're able to purchase materials for our family resource room, and it funds our academic parent teacher team meeting nights that we have three times per year, which includes childcare on a regular year, um, translation, and all the materials that we send home with families. Chester T participates in the Title I program by providing supplemental instruction for academic needs in reading and math. Any student can get service based on their academic need. Students have to qualify for Title I based on a survey, a multi-criteria survey that we use that's called TINA. TINA is an acronym for Title I Needs Assessment. So teachers fill out a survey for each child and children get points based on their need, whether parents have asked for help or they're struggling with classwork, whether the teacher's asking for help. All those points add up and the students who come to the top of the list would be the students who are most at need and who would receive that Title I support. Our Title I program at Chester T is school-wide. 
That means that at least 40% of our students receive free and reduced lunch, and all students can benefit from the Title I services and resources. Back in the day, we used to be targeted assistants, which means 35% were on free or reduced lunch, and only those students who qualified for Title I could use the resource. So it became very um, wonderful when all students could use those resources, whether they qualified for Title I or not, um, and it ensured that all students could benefit. For example, all students can use the family resource room, but if we were targeted assistants, only students who qualified for Title I would be able to check out our materials. We develop a school improvement plan every year, and our school improvement plan this year has four school-wide goals that involve literacy, math, family partnerships, and fostering respect. Here are our school improvement plan goals, and they state how we're going to improve achievement um, for each area. So we're going to gather evidence from our milestones assessment to show that our students have scored proficient or above an ELA. And also, we're going to increase scores by 3% in math as measured by the milestones. Um, students and staff will use PBIS to foster respect throughout our school, and we're going to decrease our behavior incidences by 10%. And we're going to increase our parent involvement as measured by our overall attendance at APTT meetings to 70% in order to improve student achievement. So those are our four school improvement goals that we're working on for the 2020-2021 school year. We have many programs in place to help children. Um, one includes small differentiated groups for instruction, where kids work with smaller groups in their class and they're working with kids who are working on their levels. We also have an RTI or response to intervention, and that is Tuesday through Friday in grades two through five from 1.30 to two o'clock. Students will get remediation or enrichment or just extra practice on skills they're working on based on their needs. We have programs such as APTT, which help partner with families to communicate academic needs and ways to help at home. And we have extra reading and math support for students with our highest academic needs. Students can receive extra help from programs such as Title I, EIP, which stands for Early Intervention Program, or ESOL, which is English as a Second Language. We have a state report card, and by clicking on this link, which we will include the slideshow without the video, you can see how Chesta T ranks um, in comparison to other Forsyth County schools and also other schools in the state. For our curriculum, Chester T uses the Georgia Standards of Excellence. Teachers instruct students through those small groups and differentiated instruction. We have guided reading and leveled readers, math groups. We use the American Reading Company in grades K through five this year. And we integrate science and social studies into language arts lessons and teach these subjects in their own block of instruction also. We give several assessments throughout the year to check on students' progress and make sure um, that we're tracking how they're doing. One school test is universal screening, which is given in fall, winter, and spring. This is a short test for all grade levels and students. Um, it tracks their progress throughout the year and makes sure that they are showing progress on those foundational skills. We have progress monitoring for students who are served by Title I and EIP. We have um, access testing for ESOL students only. They go through some extra tests. We have classroom assessments um, for our core subject areas to show how students are doing. And we have the ERLA testing, which is to distinguish students' reading levels through ARC or the American Reading Company. For our district, we have the Spring Benchmark Assessment for grades two through five, 
and there are also quarterly assessments that help distinguish scores for the report card. State testing includes the milestones test for grades three through five, which will be given in April. These tests are used to measure progress of our grade level standards, and progress is measured with different levels being beginning, developing, proficient, or distinguished. Our school has the SLDS, or Statewide Longitudinal Data System, which gives you access to test performance, attendance, standards, and things that you need to know about your child. You can find that in our Parent Portal Program. If you go to our website and go to the top right, you'll see Parent Portal, and that's where you can access it using our webpage. We have a Parent and Family Engagement policy. We put this on our website and we also house that in our family resource room. Every family received that at open house as well. And this policy outlines how the school meets family engagement requirements. We also have grade level school and parent compacts, which is an agreement between families, students, and teachers to improve academic achievement and work together for academic success. These are revised every spring. We revised them last spring based on feedback from staff and families, and we made those revisions and approved it by our parent um, advisory council before publishing it for this fall. Parents have a right to know the professional qualifications of our staff. Parents can request the qualification of their child's teacher at any time. All Chesity teachers are highly qualified, which means that they are certified in the area that they are teaching. Any long-term sub that we have for sickness or maternity leave are always certified subs. And that would be if some, a teacher was going to be out for 10 or more days. We, ensure that a certified sub will take their place. We have many, many opportunities for family engagement at Chestity. Even without being able to come into the school at this time, family engagement opportunities include our APTT meetings, our Facebook Friday shows, which go out every Friday, various PTO events, and parent help videos that we have on our website. We also have many volunteer opportunities. Um, we will, this will be determined as the year progresses, but we have watchdog dads where our guys do sign up for time on our car line. Our PTO is a great way to get involved in those events. And then hopefully later on in the year, we'll be able to open up the rest of our volunteer groups like coming into the classroom or being a part of mentoring Chesity Chicks, our Champs or Grand Champs program, or even helping out in the Media Center. We have several ways for parents to be involved in our decision-making process. One way is to join the Parent Advisory Council. We meet four times each year. We've already met once, and it's a great way to be in the know about what's going on at the school and to provide feedback. We'll also have our Title I planning meeting in May, which will offer feedback opportunities. We give a lot of surveys throughout the year, and you can always email or contact me um, or any staff member and give your input. Funding for our family engagement program includes the family engagement coordinator salary. Um, this position is meant to be a liaison between the school and families and is used to create opportunities for families to get involved. The money for family engagement also funds the family resource room and APTT. Here's a picture of the inside of our family resource room, which is located right inside our cafeteria. For right now, families can request items using our tea list, which is a click list sort of thing like Kroger has, where you can check the items that you would like and we'll send them home in your child's book bag. If your child were a virtual student, we can um, put those in the lobby for you to pick up 
or we can even make home deliveries. It's a great place to check out manipulatives, games, flashcards, books, workbooks, extra practice for home. We also offer a lot of help for the website, its learning, class link, and parent portal. So if you needed help, feel free to reach out to me. Um, during a regular time, you would come into the family resource room and, and I would help you here. Um, for right now, I can meet you in the lobby or we can look at it over the phone and do a virtual meeting to help out with our programs. We have something called the 1% set aside for our family engagement funding. What this is, is 1% of our total Title I budget for the county is set aside for what parents say they find valuable and how we should spend the money for our school. So these can include parent workshops, teacher workshops and training, resources, books, flashcards, materials that people would like to see in our family resource room. All that is decided based on parent input. Items are purchased and programs are paid for with Title I money based on your parent input. And that's why surveys are so important. Um, one big item has been APTT and people have said in large that it's been very valuable. So we use a lot of our family engagement funding to keep that program going. Here is our procedure for Title I questions and concerns. It's always best to start with the teacher and then go from there and work your way down if questions or concerns are not addressed. Our district has a written complaint procedure located in the front office and also in our family resource room if no resolution comes from contacting our school staff and admin team. And I'd really like to thank you for joining us today for this slideshow. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to me. My extension here at Chestity is 722-122. Miss Beverly Jablonski's is 722-340. You can also email us. I appreciate Title I resources as a staff member because it brings extra funding to Chesity that we would not have without it. And we've had so many different programs and things that we are able to take advantage of with this funding. As a parent, I also appreciate Title I because my girls have benefited as students. And although they don't qualify for free and reduced lunch, they can benefit from resources from our family resource room, APTT, all the technology in the building. There are so many great perks that they get to take advantage of whether they've qualified for Title I assistance or not. So we're very um, thankful to have Title I. Let me know as you have questions. I would love to answer them. Take care, everybody.